What is going on in another video coming at you from Redskins Rant? Hail to the Redskins. This is not exactly about the Redskins. This is just going to be a rant in general. And my glasses are very foggy. Hold on. Oh, boy. <clears throat> so, when I drive, I like to listen to YouTube. Not watch. Listen to YouTube. And one of my favorite shows in the past has been... um. It's been uh, First Take. If you ever watch First Takes, or um, Stephen A. Smith, who's like a guy, my favorite person ever to listen to about about sports. And as far as a guy, I cannot freaking stand. And I mean, I, I get livid every time I hear him have a conversation, ha have an opinion. Um, Max Kellerman. Um, I don't like him for a lot of reasons. Um, I, I don't want to get into that. But here's here's the one I'm listening to right now, and I think it's just the dumbest freaking take ever. So. The asked the question was asked by their ho their uh, moderator Molly Karam. Um, is Tom Brady a franchise changing quarterback in Tampa? Because they had a, a quote from Mike Evans says he's excited to work with him, and unequivocally he is a franchise changing quarterback. And unequivocally, if you just have any other quarterback other than um, Jameis Winston last year who doesn't have thirty turnovers. He, with his 30 turnovers, he gave the opponent over 130 points. Okay? Last year, they were 7-9. and nine. If you minimize those points given away by turnovers, you're going to have at least four or five more wins right there. Then you add in one of the greatest quarterbacks ever. I mean, you're going to have at least three wins just by minimizing the quarterback errors. But then you, then you add in the greatest quarterback ever, the most accomplished quarterback ever. And I know what people think, like, oh, he's past his prime. Tom Brady is not the greatest he's ever been. He's not at his peak, but he's definitely not done when it comes to being able to be a good quarterback. Tom Brady's receivers, all of them, every one of them, there's a there's a statistics that, that, that it's how much separation you have between yourself and the defender when the ball's thrown. Every one of them was below 100 rank. So, for example, 1 through 100, 1 is the best. So, if I'm the best receiver when the ball's thrown, I have a six yard, a five yard gap between me and the defender because I get open really well. Okay. So 100 would mean maybe that gap is like, you know, two and a half yards. Tom Brady, every one of his, every single one of his receivers, tight ends, receivers, even Julian Edelman was like, he, Julian Edelman was the best, like one, 101. Okay. All of them were, were like 100 to like the 150 range or in that range. So he had the worst crop of receivers of anyone in the league. I mean, we're Redskin fans. If you're watching this, you're probably a Redskin fan. Our receivers had better separation than Tom Brady's receivers last year. He still went like what, 12 and four, or 15 and 15 and or 11 and five. Um, he still had over 3,000 passers. Still had a lot of touchdowns. They weren't that. Were, they were not that open. And his completion percentage is bad. And it was like completion percentage is bad. Well, his completion is bad because guys aren't open. And he'd rather not take a sack and lose yards. Tom Brady's too smart for that. So he just throws the ball. And not to mention, if you watch any of the games, there's a lot of drops. Okay, there's a lot of drops by players. Okay, just if you don't know sport, if you don't know these things, you shouldn't talk about sports. Watch the game and go look at the analytics on Tom Brady. It, it doesn't make sense. But anyway, Max Kellerman a couple years ago made the statement that Tom Brady was going to fall off a cliff, so to speak. He was going to fall off a cliff. Um, that he was going to nosedive and be like really bad. Okay, not. Um, a gradual decline, which basically he made this about two and a half years ago after Tom Brady had already won a Super Bowl. Um, this is before he played the Eagles in a Super Bowl. It was like right after he beat um, he beat somebody. I can't remember who it was. Who did he beat? The Falcons. Right after he beat the Falcons, he went and he said Tom Brady's going to fall off a cliff. And then ever since then, Tom Brady's proved them wrong every single year. He said it'd be about a year to. 18 months, and we're almost three years after that. I mean, you have the Eagles Super Bowl, the Patriots won Super Bowl, and then the Chiefs last year. Okay, so at least three years. And he, he looks stupid every time. So he has it out for Tom Brady. Tom Brady made him look like a damn fool because he's a fucking fool. I'm sorry. Poor my French. I cannot stand him. He's got the dumbest opinions ever. And his opinion of uh, Tom Brady is, like, not, not very good quarterback right now. He does not know football. He is on – he works at ESPN. He has access – to the same stats that I can look up on ESPN. If you look up on ESPN, you can look at um, you can look at yardage. You can look at um, the the statistic of receivers, how open they are when they're throwing the ball, and how much uh, space is it between them and the and the um, defender. You can look at all of that. None of them were open. 
They're not. And you can watch a game film and easily tell why Tom Brady had trouble. None of these guys are open. So, and that's why he was so desperate to get Tom or uh, get um, Antonio Brown on his team because Antonio Brown was open. He was open a lot. He was in one game. Antonio Brown was open eight times, and his average in that was like five yards, uh, five yard gap between him and the defender. And Tom Brady's like, I'll take that all day, but Antonio Brown's Antonio Brown. So. But he's just so freaking, I cannot stand his fucking opinions. And I'm sorry I keep cussing. If it bugs you, I apologize. But I cannot stand his fucking opinions. If Tom Brady jumps on a team with Mike Evans, who's one of the best shooters in the league by far, 6'4", good speed, good hands, probably made Johnny Manziel a first-round pick, if you want to be honest. That's why Johnny Manziel went first round, is because he made Johnny Manziel look really good. Okay. Um, he has what Godwin, I think his name Goodwin, Godwin, Godwin's good. He's got two good tight ends, Brate and, um, OJ Howard. <coughs> and he's going to come in there and only, and only influence him three games. He said this earlier today. He said they're a nine to 10 win team. No, another quarterback other than Jameis Winston doesn't turn the ball over 30 times and doesn't allow the other team because of those turnovers to get 128 more points. Any other quarterback who just doesn't turn the ball over that many times will probably win you th- two, two to three more games. Tom Brady is probably going to win you about five or six more games. I'm, I'm not making that up. They're probably going to go about 12 and four, maybe 13 and three. And you heard that here. But I cannot stand this guy. He is so dismissive of statistics. He's one, he, this is how hypocritical he is. He is one that loves analytics and loves statistics and loves analysis of games and things like that. And he always uses the argument when people use statistics against them. Oh, you mean accurate representations of historical events? You don't want me to use those things? But then he won't use it himself when it comes to Tom Brady. He won't use the statistics. He won't use the analysis. He won't use the fact that he had no receivers. None of those receivers are pro bowlers. None of those receivers are good. The only one that's decent was Julian Edelman. And Julian, I mean, Julian Edelman had a decent season last year. But Julian Edelman is, what, 32? He's in decline. And and you can't just always throw to Julian Edelman because you have to. You can't just throw it in the middle of the field all the time. You have to hit the edges. You have to spread the defense out. I, I really can't stand Max Kellerman. He really irritates me because he, he – I, I don't like him personally because I think for a long time, and this is why I don't like – I actually used to religiously listen to the show every day, like from getting to end, listen to it, podcast. I'd either do it on the way to work – I do it at work when we're dead, or I do it on my way home from work. So I get, I somehow squeeze it into the entire day. Um, every day he would talk. He wanted to talk about the president and whether you're opinion of the president or not. But it gets annoying because he just wants to talk about the president. Which I'm not going to go political here for a second, but a lot of things that he said about the president end up being lies because because they, there's court cases now that prove it. So and he really should be sued for libel, but I don't want to get into that. But I couldn't stand it because I just I'm like I want to listen to sports. I don't want to talk about politics, okay? And he talk about every day. He talk about slavery or something like that. And he wants to talk about all these things that aren't aren't sports related. And then when he talks about sports. He literally has the dumbest opinions ever. Like he tries to justify LeBron James sitting out like like 12, 15 games a year. And his reason for that, like, well, he wants to win a championship. Okay, Michael Jordan's played every game to keep himself in tip top shape. Why is it Michael Jordan didn't have didn't set out games, but LeBron James has to? When LeBron James is supposed to be the better athlete and the the better shape and taller and bigger and the the trainings are, are the training regiments are better now and there's more advancements in science and and physical tech, technology about being more uh, physical and things like that. Why is it he needs those things? I don't understand that. But he always has these dumbass fucking opinions, and this one irritates me. Because he will intentionally, and I know this has been brought up on the show before. It's been brought up before how much, uh, how unopen the receivers are. Steve Day Smith has brought it up. Like, hey, these guys aren't open, ever. That's why he was desperate to get Antonio Brown. He let Antonio Brown sleep, stay in his house. That's how desperate he was for a good receiver. And he finally got one, and then the Pittsburgh released some, some crap. And I, I still think Pittsburgh should be uh, investigated for this. It, how is it the day after Antonio Brown gets signed by the pit, by the uh, the New England Patriots, Pittsburgh releases some kind of sexual assault allegations? I still think they need to investigate about that. I think they held on to it until they needed it. That's my personal opinion. But regardless of that, um, that's that's 
that's the last thing I'm going to go over right now. Is I cannot stand Max Kellerman. His opinions irritate me. He ignores facts, and because he has a platform, he does all this crazy ass bullshit. Not to mention, he won't say the Washington Redskins name, and I'm tired of that. Um, I'm tired of that. I just, I just don't like him. I really can't stand him. Okay, if I, if I saw him in real life, I'd punch him in the face. I really would. I cannot stand the guy. But this is JD. This is Redskins rant. I'm not ranting about the Redskins. I'm ranting about ESPN. Uh, anchor Max Kellerman, who I cannot freaking stand. I can't stand him with a burning passion, and neither should anyone here, because he's one of those people that thinks the Redskins name should be changed. There's a lot of people out there that are a lot of Native Americans that don't find it offensive at all, but for some reason, the only opinion that matters is he's he's one of those elite white people that thinks that they know what they know what offends people more than people that are that should be offended. He's one of those people, so. Um, this is Redskins Rant, Health of the Redskins. Have a good one. See ya.